Welcome guys to episode number 14 of my Minecraft Let's Play. Hope you well and today we've started off a little bit differently than normal with a time lapse of the tower build as you can see in the distance it is towering and this is exactly what I wanted it to turn out like. I'm still not finished with it of course there is a lot of detailing work that still needs to go in I need to add windows I need to add interiors and I have started to try and build up the bottom bit around the base of the tower. So I've added in some grass and I've added in the structures under the water to support the tower. Now the detailing of the tower isn't as important as the build itself, which is why I kind of left it for now and this is where we are. I can probably detail off camera between episodes on a live stream or something. So you may be wondering, well knock. How did this all come about? Where did you get all your materials from? Well, fear not curious viewer, I have got you covered. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go back in time to before I even tackled this build, and I'm gonna show you how we went about getting everything ready and how we got to this end point. Enjoy! Come have a look where we are again. That's right guys, we are over at the Nether Fortress because we are back trying to get some wither schools today. Hopefully you've already seen the segment of me starting to build the tower, but I need so many resources and that means I need to do a lot of mining for stone. So I really want to see if I can get myself some wither schools and against my better judgment, make a wither and get a beacon. We've just got to find some wither skeletons first and pray that they drop their heads. Not too difficult, right? You're like London buses. Don't find any for ages, and then three come at once. Oh, with the skellies, oh, with the skellies. Where are the with the skellies? You're over here, you're over here. Come and have some of my netherite sword. Can I have a skull now? Can I have a skull now? I would be really grateful. Yes! We've got our first skull. I'm being shot at. First skull! Huzzah! The next day. <sighs> After another 30 minutes, we have our second wither skull head. Now I thought this was meant to be a 20% chance of them dropping a head. Um, I have killed 72 wither skeletons and I have got two skulls to show for it. So that's a one in 36 chance I've got of getting a wither skeleton. But, we're getting close. One more, and we can at least create a wither to try and get our very first beacon. Oh my god. We have got our third and final wither skull. <sighs> it's taken 90 two withers to get three skulls. That's almost 31 skeletons per skull. Finally, guys, I cannot tell you how happy and relieved I am finally to have three wither skulls. Seriously, these, this has just taken so long over multiple days and I've probably been sat here for about two hours today alone where I've got those last two skulls. But now we need to go and grab ourselves some soul sand and gear up because we're gonna go for take on a wither. And that's something I've never done in Minecraft. Now you didn't just think we was gonna rush in and go in blind, did you? All right guys, so I am under the ground here in a testing world and I have set up a little chamber here where I'm gonna do some experimentation with this wither. So I've set my game mode to survival here and I'm gonna place down my wither heads. And the first test I wanna do here is just to see whether or not I can survive in this tunnel while the wither is alive. I've seen a few strategies that use this, but let's just see what happens. He's gonna rise up, but can he see me? Ah, 
Ha. Okay, so he's he's going ham. I think he can see me here. The reason I tried this is a video I recently watched. The wither just kind of floated in the air and the guy was able to sort of stand here and, and pick the wither off. But that doesn't seem to be the case here. Oh, he's taking out that. Uh, he targeted the bat. There was a bat in there. So, yeah, I hate to say it, but I don't think this method is particularly great. Okay, so I've given myself a bow here. I'm just going to see what sort of things I can do with this. But yeah, he's going ham again on some bats. There's some bats down there. Okay, this is what I wanted. This is what I wanted. So I was hoping that I could do this and he would go up to the top like this. So that kind of gives me a bit of protection. Okay, he's in his second phase now. So, okay. I think once he's in his second phase, I can no longer use arrows. Okay, so he's down to health. And then if I use a smite sword, look. I think he's dead. Okay, that was stupidly easier than I thought it was going to be. Ha! Huh. All right, guys, we are back here with attempt number two. We're going to do exactly the same thing again and just verify what we just did there was correct. So we just need this wither to get going. And... Okay, so the minute I hit him, he flies up into the air. And then we can start doing this. And we just need a big enough tunnel. I think that's the key here. The key is we just need a big enough tunnel to back up and we can pretty much do a damageless with a fire here. Wow, that was super crazy easy. So yeah, we just need a big enough tunnel and that exact same setup. So I'm going to head off. I'm going to get some enchants. We need a smite five sword and a bow with power five punch two and infinity. Our existing bow might just work wonders. But yeah, I'm, starting, I'm feeling a bit more confident about this fight now. That was easier than I thought, and it seems like everything went to plan. Let's just hope it does when we do it for real. All right, guys, I've dug my area. I have placed my soul sand. Hopefully, fingers crossed, this will go as well as it did in testing. So here goes. Didn't quite have a punch two bow. I've just got my normal bow, which is actually power four punch two. So not as powerful as the one I was using in the testing. And then the sword, I haven't actually got my netherite sword, I've just got an iron sword, which actually had smite five on it. So it's not as powerful as a diamond or a netherite sword, but it's doing the job. And there we go. That is that. <laughs> and we got a we got a wither head as well. There we go. That is That's our wither fight, done and dusted. And considering I was quite nervous about doing this whole thing and thinking I was going to be not going to be prepared for this, it actually went relatively easy, which I'm pretty happy about. So next up, we'll head back to the base and we're going to need to make ourselves a beacon. And then I suppose the next real question we have is, do we have enough blocks to power the beacon? But let's get back to the base and let's get this thing made and then we'll cross that bridge once we get there. Okay, so back at base and making one of these beacons is relatively easy actually. We just need to make some obsidian glass around it and then our star in the middle, boom. We have ourselves a beacon. Now as pretty as it is to look at, a beacon's not much use unless you have a way to power it with the blocks and a bit of research and to make a four level pyramid, we need 164 blocks, which can be mixed and matched between say, diamond, emerald, netherite, I think, and iron. Now looking at our supplies, I think we're gonna come up quite short. <laughs> I think it's fair to say on making these things that we need. So we have 34 diamonds, uh, 44 plus 24, is 68. We don't even have enough to make half of it. Luckily though, with a beacon, you don't need to make all layers to use it. 
So I do also have some gold lying around from our nether adventures as well. I've got more than this somewhere. So I'm gonna actually round up all of my materials that I have, all my precious stuff. I'm gonna see how many blocks I can make in total. And I'm pretty sure I'll have enough to make the 83 blocks to make a three level pyramid. So let me go and find out what materials I do and don't have. And then we'll put it in place and activate our beacon for the very first time. So I just, mind all of my golden nuggets from the nether and would you believe that i am one block short 58 61 81 82 i need 83 seriously you couldn't make this up luckily for me i have some more nuggets here oh but i'm still short maybe oh i'm still two gold bars short more frustratingly i'm one iron nugget short as well Let's go and get some stuff from the nether. All this effort for 14 golden nuggets, eh? Okay, we've gathered up some nuggets. And that's one. And two. Take a block. Huzzah. We'll just make a few more for luck as well. But there we go. We are massively out of resources now. But we should now have enough blocks to make a beacon. Now, I know this episode possibly isn't making much sense, but if you're wondering why I need the beacon, if I haven't already explained, we're going to start working on our wizard's tower, which you've already seen me construct. I know this episode's a little bit weird. It's all backwards and stuff. So we're going to take this beacon underground and we're going to dig ourselves a load of stone because we're going to need a lot of stone bricks. And I think in the previous episode, I estimated that we needed about 3,000 blocks at least. So let's go and plug in our beacon and have ourselves a little mining session. All right, guys, we are back. We are underground just across here from our slime farm. And I had a couple of moments of blind panic, but our beacon is now activated at least. And we're going to put a diamond in there and hopefully everything is working. I've got my haste there, so that's cool. We can now get to mining. The moments of blind panic was I totally messed up the size of this beacon and I didn't think I'd got enough blocks, but it turns out I had. Then I was like, well, why doesn't the beacon activate it? Why isn't it working? I had totally forgotten that the beacon needs to be able to see the sky in order to activate and operate. So anyway, I'm going to swing my pickaxe around down here for a bit because we need a lot of stone for our building project. So let's get right to it and get some resources. All right, guys, we are back in the base and I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed with the <laughs> results I got from the beacon. Now I know I don't have a full pyramid and I only had haste one, but to me it didn't feel like I was getting any sort of mining boost from having that beacon. It just seemed like I was mining at the same speed as I normally would with a netherite pickaxe when the beacon was activated. So I'm gonna have to do some science with knock at some point and actually see if there is a difference. I'm sure the wiki said something about there was a 10% increase in the mining speed, but to me, I didn't really notice anything. So we'll, we'll do some tests anyway later. Anyway, we do have pretty much all the stone bricks we're gonna need, I hope, for the first part of this build. I've also been to the end, as you can see, and I've got myself some more shulker boxes. We did die while we was out there, unfortunately, as well. So that's why we've lost some levels. But with the shulker boxes loaded, we are ready to head out and start our building. Which is kind of weird because I know you guys have already seen me building this. But at this point, I haven't built it. This episode is getting stranger and stranger as it goes on. But without further ado, let's head on out and start building up this massive tower. And now finally back to the present. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have finally caught ourselves up in this episode and here we are in all its glory. Now, as you can see from when you saw me building it in the beginning of the episode, I've actually made some changes and I've actually used some of the nether colors here. I can never remember what this stuff is called, but we've used the, I think it's nylium and crimson blocks and we've kind of created two separate towers just to give ourselves a little bit more color as you can see we've got a crimson tower here and then a nylium warped whatever this block is called um here and we've actually used the wood 
here and then we've used some wart blocks here leading up for the detail we've left the main tower there with the original color and the original detail and then just to finish it off as well i've also added in some fence posts underneath rather than the dark oak fence posts that i originally put on and i think this is looking really cool now there is still a ton though of work to be done here there is no uh, interior design done here at all we need to detail we need to put some windows in I'm gonna to have to put a staircase. I've got a really cool idea for something down at the bottom. So yeah, there's still a lot of work to be done in this tower. It's certainly far from finished, but that's stuff that I can do off camera at least. And um, oh, one other little detail that I'm gonna show you really quickly and uh, try and get your opinion on. I don't know what uh, how you guys feel about it, but if you look up top, I've kind of put these beams in here with some stripped wood and then some trap doors on the top to try and give kind of like a, an impression that it's being held up now i did these joins in here but i almost think that i should add on some vertical logs to hit to the ceiling so it kind of actually makes it look like the wood is joined onto something i thought about bringing them down but it would take up too much floor space because these towers aren't very wide so I may add those in, but let me know in the comments down below what you think of the idea. I just think with a beam looking, these joins kind of would make more sense to have something joined to it to actually give these trapdoors a little bit more purpose. But yeah, let me know in the comments, guys, what you think about that idea. So there we are, guys. That is going to bring us to the end of this video. And for once, it's a relatively short one. I think we're coming in at around... 20 minutes on this video which is kind of mad considering we normally make the 30 minute mark but we can't always do long videos i think it's nice sometimes just to have a bit of a shorter one as well the next episode hopefully we'll have made some off-screen progress on this tower and some of the decorating of it to probably make some more details pop and i've also got a another idea for the next episode where we're going to be back and building once again, we're going to build another structure outside of the base. And uh, I think that's going to be the theme for the next few episodes. We're just going to build some bigger structures out here and make more use of this land area we have in and around. But as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your continued support. And until next time, see ya!